This is a pair of down pants my mom bought for my child online. My child said that they were uncomfortable to wear, always complaining about feeling something odd inside. So I decided to cut it open here, and what I found inside really shocked me. It was beetle nut husks and cigarette butts. These were the first batch of foreign objects I removed. Just now, I felt there might be something else around here, like some sort of hard cardboard. Oh my goodness, it's plastic and hard cardboard. Can you believe these were in the line of children down pants? No wonder she said it felt like it was pinching her flesh uncomfortably. Online shopping has become an important mode of consumption and lifestyle for people today, with e-commerce platforms offering a shopping experience that teeters between promise and uncertainty. These platforms have upended traditional retail models, allowing Chinese suppliers to connect directly with consumers and eliminating the need for middlemen. This unique approach has made product prices significantly lower than those in conventional markets. The question is whether these online shopping platforms are hidden gems, offering unmatched deals to customers, or traps that shoppers should be wary of. With an increasing number of merchants joining. The issue of counterfeit goods and knockoff brands on Chinese e-commerce platforms is growing, and many products have untraceable origins, making it harder to regulate these online platforms. Solutions to this problem, such as those offered by Taobao, are limited. When faced with potentially illegal counterfeit products, Taobao customer service merely states that merchants will have their shop credibility points deducted or their products taken down as punishment. Many knockoff merchants exploit policy loopholes to enter the market, imitating the appearance or functionality of mainstream brand products at a much lower cost, creating knockoff brands that surpass the genuine products in terms of price. When warned by customer service of online shopping platforms, these merchants simply shut down their shops, leaving customers and customer service with no recourse for complaints or refunds. These policy and regulatory gaps have emboldened counterfeiters in China. Where a search on any online shopping platform for high-quality replicas will reveal a variety of luxury brand clothing at suspiciously low prices, the adage "you get what you pay for" holds true, as the absence of a product inspection mechanism on online shopping platforms allows unscrupulous merchants to sell substandard goods at low prices, completely disregarding the safety of their customers. However, for Chinese consumers, encountering dangerous knockoffs has become all too common. From luxury brands to everyday items, and even food, knockoff products have permeated the lives of Chinese people, making it impossible for them to avoid and difficult to report as well. It's so common to see an authentic product launched one day, only to be flooded with numerous similar knockoffs the next day. Even when consumers discover they have been deceived and decide to report the unscrupulous merchants, it's not guaranteed that these merchants will face legal consequences. The main reasons can be attributed to three factors. First, China's insufficient protection of intellectual property rights allows these merchants to exploit the imperfections of Chinese law to defend themselves. Second, some well-known knockoff merchants, due to their complex supply chains and large profits, May have formed special care relationships with officials to avoid trouble, as is the case in Putian, Fujian, where 90% of the population is involved with counterfeit Putian shoes. Who is going to report such cases when virtually everyone is on board? Third, there is a regulatory vacuum in China's market supervision, where regulatory departments act perfunctorily. How so? Consider the following example. On November third, twenty twenty-three, a man with the alias Ah Feng in Jinning, Shandong, purchased a set of African solid wood tea table and chairs from Chi Feng Furniture Store on Taobao. Upon receiving the product, Ah Feng discovered quality issues and suspected it was a counterfeit. Ah Feng repeatedly requested product certification, quality inspection reports, and furniture usage instructions, but the shop owner consistently refused to provide them. In frustration, Ah Feng reported this to the Hangzhou Market Regulatory Department, which, to his astonishment, asked him to provide evidence of the merchant's wrongdoing instead of initiating an immediate investigation. Why are there so many counterfeit goods on Taobao? 
Is it because your market monitoring and supervisory department aren't doing their job? That's the way I see it. If you claim it's counterfeit, you need to provide valid evidence, which neither of you can. No, I did ask him for it, according to my rights, including what I asked him for, and he can't present it to me. Can I consider it his fault? But he can't present the evidence. Why can't he? As a market regulator, can't you demand it from him? He can't present it. How can we verify his situation if he hasn't presented the evidence to our department? Then what is your department even doing? China began a major crackdown on knockoff products in 2022 to curb the widespread circulation and sale of counterfeit goods in the market, with large quantities of fake products being destroyed daily. However, online shopping platforms are lenient in screening merchants and products. This, combined with government regulatory departments in action, suggests that these crackdown efforts might only be superficial. Customers can still find knockoff products on online shopping platforms, although knockoff merchants are no longer as openly selling fake goods as before, but they have not decreased in number or have been completely eliminated because of government regulations. Who said that knockoff smartphones have disappeared? while this one is blatantly appearing on the homepage of an e-commerce platform. A fan mentioned that their family searched online for mobile phones, and they came across a knockoff called Rongyao Shantong, equipped with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processor, and it was selling quite well. Only upon bringing it home do people realize it is a knockoff. These incidents reflect the Chinese government's inability to effectively combat knockoff goods and fake products. They've not only failed to stop the emergence of counterfeit goods, but also allowed China's knockoff products market to expand overseas through online shopping platforms. In recent years, foreign customs have repeatedly seized poor quality counterfeit goods from China and Hong Kong. This has led to a global increase in vigilance against products sold from China. Several Chinese online shopping platforms and physical stores have recently been added to the United States' notorious markets list. The U.S. Trade Representative's office released the 2023 notorious markets list on January 30th, which includes Chinese platforms like WeChat, Taobao, and Pinduoduo, along with seven physical markets highlighting China as the world's largest source of counterfeit goods. The criteria for this year's notorious markets list focused on potential health and safety risks. This involves using low-quality materials and lacking regulatory oversight or safety controls, leading to products being non-compliant, ineffective, and hazardous. Categories include children's toys and goods, vehicle parts, electronics, drugs and medical supplies, personal care products, clothing, and footwear. Furthermore, the sale of counterfeit drugs driven by high profits not only troubles the public but also poses challenges for border enforcement officers. According to the official website of the U.S. Trade Representative, this year's list revealed 39 online market platforms and 33 physical market platforms. These platforms come from 18 different countries, and they are either participating in or aiding trademark counterfeiting or copyright piracy activities. The 39 online markets that were named include Taobao from China's Alibaba, Tencent's instant messaging software WeChat, Baidu's cloud storage service Baidu NetDisk, DHgate, and Pinduoduo, which were all relisted. Shopee, headquartered in Singapore, also made the list, along with India's three major online platforms. This marks the 10th consecutive year that Taobao has been included in the notorious markets list and the second year for Pinduoduo. AliExpress and the WeChat e-commerce ecosystem, both with international online retail service platforms, were listed for the first time in 2022 for fostering a large amount of trademark counterfeiting. The 33 physical markets come from 18 different countries, including China, Vietnam, India, and the Philippines. Notable among them, seven Chinese markets were named Shenzhen's Huaqiang Bay Electronics Commercial Area, Beijing's Silk Street Market, Shanghai's Xinhuang International Clothing Wholesale Market, 
Guangzhou's Danxing Watch Market, Liaoning's Wai Market, Shenzhen's Luohu Commercial City, and Guangzhou's Xinbaijia Online Wholesale Market. Watch Yangbei in Shenzhen is well known as a major electronics distribution hub in China, and is notorious as one of the country's four major centers for counterfeit goods. Thanks to Shenzhen's status as an electronics manufacturing base and the area's trade in parallel imports from Hong Kong, Huaqiang Bay has become a go-to destination for 3C digital products. Shoppers here have access to incredibly low-priced electronics and cosmetics, which may have questionable origins in the malls during the daytime. Additionally, the ghost markets that come alive at night in this area offer perfect replicas of a range of luxury items, including fake versions of high-end Dyson hair dryers. In this video, we can see that apart from its plastic exterior and lighter weight, the fake Dyson hair dryer looks identical to the authentic product. Counterfeit merchants can even match the weight of the fake to the real item by adding weights, making it difficult for a non-professional to distinguish between the two. These counterfeit merchants even convince customers to buy fakes with the reasoning that if you paid real money, it's real. It's said that many products made in China are a mix of authentic and fake, to the point where even a pair of shoes can be a mix, with the left shoe being authentic and the right one fake. Even experts may not be able to tell the difference. However, Shenzhen's Huaqiang Bay Electronics Market is not the only large-scale fake and knockoff market in China. Other notorious havens for counterfeits include Yiwu in Zhejiang and Putian in Fujian. There are also many well-known counterfeit capitals that have not yet been recognized by foreigners or included on the notorious markets list. Such as Guangzhou's Beiyun District, known for fake leather bags; Suzhou for fake cosmetics; Qingdao for knockoff foreign trade clothing; Tianjin for counterfeit bicycles; and Tongxiang in Zhejiang for fake silk quilts. As a manufacturing powerhouse, China was once a primary manufacturing base for many renowned foreign brands. These factories have turned their original equipment manufacturer technologies into profitable channels, selling defective or sampled goods on online shopping platforms like Taobao and Pinduoduo. Some even develop their own counterfeit product lines, selling knockoffs worldwide. During the pandemic, Chinese online shopping enterprises like AliExpress and Pinduoduo's overseas version. Timu expanded rapidly internationally with super low price products. They tempted consumers abroad who were struggling with high prices, and as a result, retail markets in many countries like the U.S. and South Korea are being rapidly eroded by Chinese products. With the lifting of COVID restrictions, foot traffic to physical markets has rebounded, and counterfeit goods have also resurfaced. Some retailers use physical storefronts just as a cover to communicate with customers, test samples or products, and complete online transactions. Knockoff products from China can be said to be ubiquitous. For counterfeiters, there's nothing they can't replicate. These knockoff products have spread globally through online shopping platforms, contributing significantly to China's status as the world's top producer of counterfeit products. According to the U.S. Trade Representative's office, China remains the largest source of counterfeit goods globally. Counterfeit and pirated goods from China, along with goods transshipped through Hong Kong, accounted for 60 percent of the value of counterfeit and pirated goods seized by U.S. Customs and Border Protection in 2022. According to the U.S. Intellectual Property and Counterfeit Goods Review, in 2020, the global loss due to counterfeit goods is at least 1.7 trillion U.S. dollars, with counterfeit products also causing the loss of 2.5 million jobs worldwide. Aside from luxury goods, consumer electronics are among the most popular items on China's counterfeit market, and they are also among the most frequently exported products overseas. For instance, the high profits generated by products like the iPhone have led to a proliferation of counterfeit Apple products in China. According to a report by Chinese media on January 27th, the police in Suining City, Sichuan Province, recently cracked a major case of counterfeiting Apple AirPods Bluetooth headsets. 
In addition to seizing a batch of counterfeit AirPods produced in Guangdong and Guangxi, the police also dismantled nine counterfeit production bases, eight sales outlets, and three production lines. The estimated total value of the case is 167 million yuan, or about 23,500 U.S. dollars. The report mentioned that the Suining City Police seized more than 69,000 pairs of counterfeit AirPods, 45,000 pairs of semi-finished products, four sets of manufacturing tools, over 50,000 sets of packaging materials, and more than 10,000 sets of components. The police reported that during the investigation, it was discovered that the counterfeit AirPods had been sold to more than 10 provinces and cities nationwide, including Guangdong, Shandong, Sichuan, and Hainan. This proves that the counterfeiting syndicate had a vast sales network. The police are still unsure whether the counterfeit goods have been smuggled to overseas markets. In response to the changing nature of counterfeit goods sales in physical markets, the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative has advised Chinese authorities to amend and expand the scope of enforcement. Catherine Tai, the U.S. Trade Representative, stated that the trade in counterfeit and pirated goods damages the economic security of American workers. And undermines efforts to create fair and inclusive trade policies. This year's notorious markets list is particularly significant as it highlights the potential dangers of counterfeit goods. She added that as an important economic tool, the list will encourage the private sector and U.S. trade partners to take action against any harmful practices. In fact, the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative has published the annual Special 301 Report analyzing the protection and enforcement. Of intellectual property rights around the world, since many products are manufactured outside the United States, the agency identified notorious markets for the first time in 2006 to raise public awareness. This also helps market operators and the federal government prioritize intellectual property enforcement and protect American workers and businesses. China's presence on this notorious markets list is indeed significant. Baidu and Taobao entered the first list in 2011. Subsequently, Saogo 91 Wireless, Beijing Silk Street Market, Beijing Heilong Electronics City, Shanghai's Yangpu Yiguo Digital City, Shenzhen's Luohu Market, Zhejiang's Yiwu Small Commodity Market, and Hong Kong's Ladies Market also made the list. There have been multiple declarations by Chinese internet giants of increased regulation, such as Alibaba's statement following the list publication that it would continue to work with government agencies to address concerns about intellectual property protection on its platforms. Tencent, which owns WeChat, later responded that it had invested significant resources to protect intellectual property on its platform. Tencent also quote strongly opposed the decision made by the U.S. Trade Representative, also committed to cooperate to resolve the issue. However, the problem of counterfeit goods remains unresolved, with Chinese online shopping platforms appearing on the notorious market list nearly every year. In December 2011, China state media Xinhua also published a commentary. Criticizing the U.S. for launching so-called rights protection actions in the name of intellectual property protection, Xinhua stated that the notorious market list was based on American standards, which it deemed unfair. The Chinese government believes that, from the perspective of combating intellectual property infringement and protecting consumer interests, the notorious market list has some value. However, since the list is issued solely by the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, it reflects the perspective of U.S. laws and regulatory framework, and thus has not received sufficient recognition in other countries. Contrary to China's criticism, the United States evaluation was warmly welcomed by industry organizations such as the American Apparel and Footwear Association and the Motion Picture Association. The U.S. Trade Representative's office stated that although China is a member of the World Trade Organization, it has repeatedly failed to fulfill its trade commitments. Analysts believe that the root cause of the rampant counterfeit goods in mainland China is a Chinese communist government. The government's focus on quick success and lack of regulation have led to an overflow of counterfeit and substandard goods in China, with many inferior products flowing overseas. Damaging China's reputation even further.
In recent years, social unrest and the hardships of daily life in China have led many businesses to prioritize profit maximization over business integrity and consumer health. They recklessly slip counterfeit goods into the market, leaving consumers unaware of the dangers. Sadly, in China, the people affected by counterfeits have no channel for complaints, since the Chinese Communist Party places exceedingly low value on human life.